Hey, Armin, got a question for you, man. Okay, Frank, fire off. Hey, uh, how do I turn this keg into a six pack? Okay, good question, man. That's what we're going to cover on today's show, how to get a six pack. Stay tuned. Hey, Armin here. Welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. We cover training, nutrition, supplementation strategies, and a whole lot more. So stand by. Welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Eckelbarger. And I'm Frank Mills, and we have a great show for you today. Uh, today, Armin and I will be talking about how Vince approached ab training. And also, not, you know, this is not for the faint of heart, organ meat, food. Okay, so we're going to be talking about that and how it can impact you. So a lot, a lot of good information. Welcome to the NSP Nutrition Show. Uh, Armin, let's get right into this. Um, you know, ab training. How did Vince approach ab training? Okay, well, um, the way he he had this different things that he wanted to emphasize when he was talking about how to work the abs, and so he had more mm -hmm. of a facts and myths kind of statement. Um, and so that well, was one of the things I found kind of unique. Uh, from the things I've read. Uh, and I also bought the, the uh, six week uh, ab program that he put together and it was very interesting. All right, so I'm gonna be Sergeant Joe Friday. Let's start with just the facts. Uh, what would that be? <laughs> All right, like, um, you know, for one, the reality of it from uh, Vince's standpoint was, you know, the only function of the abdominals is to shorten the distance between the pelvic basin all right. And then you have the insertion, which is at the sternum. That's your mm -hmm. origin of the abs. So, right. okay. yeah, it's just a short range of motion. You want to tighten that area up so it uh, stays firm all the time. Okay. Okay. So now, part of that, though, we'll see. Now, part of that uh -huh. is he was uh, very uh, emphatic about doing sit ups. And so he would say, well, sit ups only work the so as major muscle. And so don't do them. Okay. So no sit-ups. And so what does yeah. the, was it, you said the psoas major? Uh, so what does that do? Psoas major. Yeah. Okay. So as <laughs> major. Right, so okay. yeah, this, this muscle, um, helps to arch the back, both in the supine position and in the standing position. So okay. as an example, um, okay. So all that being said, it's located in the lower M lumbar region. All right. You know, the spine. And so it extends throughout the pelvis uh, to the femur. So what this muscle does is it helps you to raise your leg up when you're standing and also bring your leg towards you. And that's the purpose of it. Uh, so it, it's, it's you know, because it comes from the hip joint. And so when people do a setup in Vince's viewpoint, based on the mechanics of it, that's all it was really working. It was a so as major muscle. And so he felt like you're not getting anything in the ab area. So he was like, you know, you gotta understand, you know, the, the whole biomechanics of how mm -hmm. the muscles are operating. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. I really didn't know that. I only thought, well, I guess a lot of people that do sit-ups think that it works most of your abs or all of your ab areas. That's pretty interesting. Uh, all right. So what other facts do you have for us? All right, so high reps and doing daily abdominal workouts mm -hmm. uh, and, Vince, and Vince's position, he felt that re would result in loss of muscle tissue and tone. And mm -hmm. so he felt like anybody that was just with it, with less than two years of training, if they did that, it was going to cost them putting on muscle size. Uh, and he was pretty, uh, pretty emphatic about it um, from just basically his knowledge of dealing with abdominal work. Hmm. All right. So why, why did he feel that way? Um, did he have any information with that? Yeah. So like when you do like a, a lot of high reps and you're, you're working that muscle, uh -huh. the thing is, is, you know, according to Vince, you know, the dom work will cause a lot of nerve shock to the nerve cluster, uh, which is kind of considered the second brain or mm -hmm. the solar plexus. Okay. So now the solar plexus is, it's found in the, the, in the pit of the stomach. So it's in the, you know, just below the, 
the, the chest area. And okay. so, and it's, it's in front of the aorta where it's located and it's part of the sympathetic nervous system and it plays an important role in the functioning of, of the stomach, the kidneys, the liver, and your overall adrenal glands. So he felt because it would impact that, it would also impact the, the, the processes of how you're going to put on muscle tissue by overstimulating that area. Wow, this Vince guy uh, really was <laughs> diving, I mean, just diving deep into this stuff. Uh, it's amazing. All right, so what oh, else yeah. you got for us, Armin? Well, the other thing was, is, you know, Vince's viewpoint was you got to get rid of the fat around the abdominal area before you really start considering working the, the abs. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just like, you know, you, you just don't start working an area that you can't even hardly move because of the fat around the area. So that was one thing as well. And then, you know, workouts with the minimum of rest between sets, you know, it helps to speed up the metabolic rate. And so these were some of the facts that, you know, in his six week abdominal course, in which I've done myself. So, you know, doing short rest intervals is, is, is going to help the metabolic rate for you, uh, not doing long rest periods. So that's another key thing that, that he felt pretty, pretty strongly about. Okay, cool. All right. So we talked about the facts. What are some of the myths that are out there? Well, one of them is, is people think um, doing abdominal exercises is going to cause the fat to go away. It's, mm -hmm. So it's not a fat emulsifier. So and people still think that today because they work in the area, they think something's going to happen there. Right. And that, you know, just because you're working, it doesn't mean you're burning fat in that immediate area. So that was one thing he was pretty, pretty emphatic about. And then along with that, you know, when you arch your back to engage the abs, all it's really doing, again, when you're doing that arch like that, you're just stretching the abs. You're not really doing anything to affect the abs in a positive way. You're just stretching them. And he's not a big fan of stretching the abdominal area. You want to keep it short and tight. So mm -hmm. it keeps everything in place and get, it's, you know, it will help you with your lower back as well, but, you know, because the abs and the stomach push and pull with each other. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. And on Interesting. top of that, yeah. And then on top of that, you know, the abdominal exercises do not produce a small waist. No. <laughs> you know, you're, you're tightening the area up, but you know, what produces a small waist is your nutrition side because you got to get that, that stuff off the sides and in the front. So that's, what's going to produce a smaller waste. Um, and then the other thing was, is you, you need to work the abdominal muscles like any other muscle versus people think they have to work the abs a different way. And they have all these different and unique strategies and how to work the abdominals to get the look. And he just, you know, he's like that. You don't have to do that. That's a myth. And mm -hmm. you just want to, you want to make sure that point was made. Okay, so you named off quite a few. Are there more? Well, yeah. So, oh. you know, and on top of that, uh, you know, a lot of people think if you eat fat, you're going to get fat. And that's not the case. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you eat fat the right way, you're actually going to burn more fat. So, and then you know, Vince do this from his nutrition strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, another one would be, you know, people would do side bends all the time. And you know, Vince says, you know, your side bends do not reduce the waistline. In fact, he felt like it would develop more muscle and he, he didn't, he didn't recommend to anybody. Now, I don't really know how much muscle you're going to develop with side bends, but he was just not a big fan of that at all. Right. Um, right. Side and bends, on top okay. of that, you know, yeah, side bends. And so on top of that, then any kind of workout speeds up the metabolic rate. And no, that's not the case. Cause if you're working out slow and steady and taking long rest periods, you're not going to have benefit the metabolic processes of burning energy. So that's why he always want to have a fast pace. But some people think because they're out there doing something, mm -hmm. you know, that they're going to get, they're going to get the effect of the abdominals just because you're being more active. And that's not really the case. And then finally, yeah, no kidding. So then finally, when you're on a weight gaining diet and you're trying to put on more mass or you're eating more, uh, you know, you don't really, you don't, you don't train the abs. People think they need to train their abs when they're doing that, and it's not necessary. Again, you just you need to strengthen the area up when you when you need to. And so, with that being said, Vince felt like you know training your abs for six weeks was more than enough. I mean, you could train them longer, but more than enough to get them to where you wanted them mm -hmm. if you knew how to eat right. And then he had his own regimen about how to train them. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Wow, a lot of good information. Um, you said you did the six week abdominal course. Did you have any takeaways from that? 
Oh yeah, good question. And you know, I was pretty impressed with it because I've done a lot of different stuff for ads over the years. Because mm-hmm. there's so much stuff that you run across, you know, doing a twist in and you know these different things that people are doing to think they're stimulating the area. Um, but when you if you do the the six week abdominal course, what you're going to learn is you need to understand how to burn fat, which he addresses. So you can do like you know he'll do it in the course. You, know, you can also look at the maximum definition diet as another strategy. If you're going to try to lean out, get get a six pack, get your abs where you want them. Or like what I also like to do, because I do it long term versus mm-hmm. a short term strategy, is the carb cycling where I'm getting the body to burn fat throughout the day and then reload the carbohydrates as needed just to replenish the muscles and the liver. So that I'm constantly burning fat as my main energy source and then using the carbohydrates to help you know, get that energy where I need it. Right, uh, and I, right. you know, I feel like when I was doing it, the thing that I liked the most is when you're, when you're doing this kind of stuff and you're dieting hard, you know, you have these cravings and these, you know, your energy levels can, can change. And I didn't have any of that because hmm. I was, you know, because of, of doing the diet where you're burning fat. So you're actually have good energy and it's not as big a deal to, to train your stomach. And of course, it's never easy to train your stomach. Don't get me right. wrong, but you know it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be just by following the way he did it. And so it made a lot of sense to me. I was uh, I was pretty impressed with it. Um, but um, you know, after that, in, in the manual, he really focuses on um, you know getting the fat fat off the belly because mm-hmm. you can't work the area if you have a layer of fat there right and then he has different exercises that again are designed to help shorten the amp wall um which you know when I, there's not there's only a handful of them and they're very effective so you don't need this elaborate uh, choices of abdominal exercises you really don't because it worked so i was really impressed i didn't have to learn a whole lot it was you know basically five or six different movements you had total Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were all effective and he, he actually combines them as you get more experience with the exercises over that six week period. Hmm. Um, and the other thing that was a huge takeaway to me was, you know, you do not train abs every day and it's just not beneficial. And also, you know, when the way he explained it is like, you know, you want to lose muscle tissue, then go ahead and train your abs every day. Just be, again, like we've mentioned with the, um, the, the, the solar plexus area that it, it overstimulates. Mm-hmm. Interesting. You know, it's funny is the first thing that I thought of as you began this last topic is uh, you're talking about all the all of the different movements. And, you know, I, I'm an older guy. And for all you older guys out there, you remember the machine that had the belt that went around your waist and it would just shake and, the people, oh, yeah, yeah, and lean yeah. that. people thought that that would narrow your waist back in the day. And everybody, you know, would do that. Um, and and thinking that would be. <laughs> <laughs> a way to lower the waistline. So, yeah, remember those? So uh, they, they didn't last. They didn't last too long. But there's several <laughs> gyms I was in. They had them in there. I mean, you know, every, somebody would walk up and use it for a few minutes and then walk away. But it's like, <laughs> I don't know, what the hell? You know, yeah, it's, that's it's a funny. loud machine too. On top of that. <laughs> All right. So to get back on track here, what about the sets and the reps in abdominal work? So that's another thing. Is Vince is like, you don't need to do, you know a whole lot of volume for your abdominals, which I like that too, because it made it easier to, to implement my workout. So, um, so with it, you know, Vince was not opposed to training your abdominals, you know, a couple of times or multiple times a day. Right. But you got to give it a full day of rest to let the nervous system catch back up. So he, he was okay with that, which, you know, if you want to continue to learn and and focus on the movements, then that's Mm -hmm. fine. So he had no problem with that. But you know, when it came to the reps, he only had, you know, a set of 10 reps. It wasn't a long, extensive amount of reps um, because his focus was not so much the repetitions is more than then you hold and squeeze the abdominal area. Right. So right. as an example, you know, when you came back, so his one of his favorite exercises was called a consummetric crunch. Okay. So the consummetric crunch, which is, um, it's in the uh, NSP um, video section too, and then also okay. with with the, my lead exact method program. There's a sample video that of how it works. But okay. this consummate crunch, as you come back, 
Okay, you take you take a small breath and you exhale as you come forward. So you're basically taking the elbows to the knees and then you hold. So the the repetition, the tempo that was used was like a four count coming back. So you're bringing the elbow, you're laying back, keep your flat back. You keep your flat back the whole time. That was another thing. It was very important. Mm -hmm. So you come back as far as you can uh, okay. comfortably. Then you're going to exhale as you bring the elbows to the knees. You want to kind of crisscross them. And you don't pull on the neck. You just have your hands behind your head. You don't pull on it. Okay, that's another important thing to know. But on this consummetric crunch, you bring it together, breathe out, and then hold it up to a six count. And, you know, your first couple of reps, no big deal. But once you start getting to seven, eight, nine, and ten, you got a really intense burn. So, and he didn't really advocate more than, you know, 10 sets of 10 would be uh, the most he would advocate for as far as if you're going to, if you felt like you need that much volume. Right. But, right. Uh, you know, when I did it, um, you know, I mean, it was extremely effective and I didn't do that much volume on it. Um, well, so, well, right, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, if anybody ha has any doubts, if you see any pictures of Vince, he's ripped. His abs look terrific, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, well, if you, uh, if, yeah, if you dissect his pictures on, on his abs, they were very, you know, his stomach was very flat. The abs were, in, you know, very flush with the lower pelvic area. So he mm -hmm. knew how to nail the lower ab, which a lot of people don't know how to do. But his exercises, his abdominal book, hit that area very effectively. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty surprised how effective it was. Um, but yeah, you know, he had everything. And again, he was lean, but he had it chiseled in very well. So you could see everything very clearly. Uh, unlike, you know, today's bodybuilders, a lot of times they have bulging stomachs, even though they, right. you know, they have an etching of the six pack. They're not you know, flat and sucked in. He was probably one of the first ones that advocated doing a vacuum mm -hmm. where you would suck the stomach up into the rib cage um, because you could, because you were so lean and because of the flexibility of abdominals at that point. So he was a big, uh, you know, he was a big proponent of people doing that from what I could tell. Interesting. Well, you mentioned that you had tried it. What was your experience? How did it work for you? So in the uh, six week abdominal course, you know, he explains all of his philosophies about abs, kind of like we've covered some of it, but not everything in detail. Right. So he explains that. And then he also has a nutrition side that comes with it. But then he progresses you over the six weeks period. So the first week, you're just spent just doing vacuums. You're practicing how to uh, control the stomach. So, and th those are, you do those kind of, you do those standing up. So that's all you mm -hmm. do for the first week. And you do a lot of them. Okay, because you're learning how to control the muscles. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the next week he goes into consent the consummetric crunch. And then after that, he goes into the what I call the ab wall, uh, the, the ab leg raise. And mm -hmm. he has a very unique strategy to the leg raise, which gets that lower ab very well. And then you combine those with you, you do them together like a superset. And then uh, he progresses to another level where you're holding onto the bench and you're you're holding your abs tight and you just raise your legs all the way up towards the, uh, as close as you can towards your head and you lower mm -hmm. them down at a really slow, again, a slow pace and pause. You don't let the legs come all the way to the bottom. And again, this whole time you keep your back flat and then it comes back up. And that was pretty brutal. Uh, when you, and again, we're not doing a lot of volume here, but right. you can just feel this, the stomach just burning. And you know, so when I come to the contest, I feel like my abs are as good as anybody else's and, Again, I only did six weeks of prep on them. So all you guys do, they do a lot longer. They'll do 10, 12 weeks of prep. Wow. I didn't need to. So that was, uh, that was pretty handy for me. And it was very effective. So, uh, you know, I would re definitely recommend it if anybody's really, um, um, well, if you're wanting to make some changes and, and you leaned out, okay, then this is a good way to go. So you absolutely recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Absolutely sorry. recommend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That I, I know that was terrible. That was terrible. Uh all right, Armin, great segment. Uh stand by here for a quick word from nspnutrition.com. And uh Armin and I will be right back. <laughs>
Hey, welcome back to the NSP Nutrition Show. I'm Armin Echelbarger. And I'm Frank Mills, and we're going to get right into organ meat uh, or organ meat foods. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know a lot about it because I, I, I think back in the old days, it was probably more popular. It's still popular oh, yeah. in certain areas now. Uh, you know, you always heard the thing like, uh, I got to eat my liver and stuff like that, right? When you're a kid. But oh, yeah. um, I guess we should start. What are organ meats or organ meat foods, Armin? Yeah. Um, in a nutshell, there are uh, several different types of organs that, um, you know, some are better known than others. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of the obvious ones is the, the liver the heart and i've had both of those myself mm -hmm. kidneys i can't really tell you on that one yeah, me brain <laughs> uh you know i know i've always seen it at the grocery store when i was little but um you know just the thought of eating that was a little tough for me right then you got tongue which uh, my mom made that and yeah and i was kind of i was kind of mixed on that but you know again i was a kid i'm looking at this tongue that you buy in the store and i'm saying like, oh my god you know <laughs> But she, you know, she would cook, and it wasn't bad when you're eating it. But you just look at this and go, "Ooh!" <laughs> right, right. Then you have the uh, the sweet breads. So we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that if you're not familiar with it. And then okay. tripe. So those are your, kind of your main categories of organ meats. Okay, so I've heard of all of those except for sweet breads, because when you say sweet breads, the first thing I think of is bread that is sweet. But I have a feeling yeah. that's not what you're talking about. So, what are sweetbreads? Yeah, I was uh, I was kind of thrown off of that one too. Okay, uh, I didn't really never know it was called that. But um, so, I guess what the way it came about is historians um, the way they they would they, when they would eat this is it had a sweet taste to it, oh. uh, richer than sweeter than compared to you know the other typical meat. So you know, probably it's probably good tasting. Uh, and they, they called it bread in the sense that it was from the English word for flesh, which is spelled B-R-A or E-A-D. So that's, that's the English term. So it kind of came from, from that context. Oh. Well, what the, what they are is they're, you know, it's the thymus gland, uh, the pancreas glands of animals. So, and because it's located in the throat or the gullet, uh, so that's, you know that's how it got it that's another part of where, where it come from but they called it that in the sense of the taste of it um and then because of the english uh, english terminology for it mm -hmm. but you know in a nutshell what you're typically trying to get here is your thymus gland uh and you know we have a thymus gland too that over time uh degener degenerates and so anytime you can keep that gland working at a high level uh, that's a good thing uh, so a lot of the thought process would be eat the sweet breads it would help that gland and so that's another thing that you know you can look it up and do some research on it but i just never had uh, those types of uh, that that i'm aware of anyways from my parents but i've never had that so i couldn't really tell you much about that one <laughs> yeah me either but you know a lot of these things depending on what country you're in or what restaurant you go to a lot of these are delicacies that you pay a lot of yeah. money for um so you know it's very interesting that you bring this up very educational i had never heard of sweetbread myself in that context either, yeah. um, one thing that you did bring up um that i'm sure a lot of people maybe might not know what it is is tripe so why don't you let people know what tripe is <laughs> all right so <laughs> tripe it refers to you know basically for like beef especially but to the stomach Mm -hmm. So you know, it includes any stuff in the stomach, uh, but it can come from cattle. It can come from sheep, deer, antelope, you know, any type of animal, um, period. But the word tripe comes from uh, the Spanish word tripus. Um, so it, it refers to a culinary dishes produced from any animal with a stomach. So it's basically eating the animal's stomach. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, a lot of people have to understand that how this evolved was back in the day, you didn't waste anything. Um, you yeah. know, nose to tail, nose right. to tail. That was what I they mean, did. you yeah. found a way to either use it or eat it. So um, I think that's how a lot of this has started to come about. And maybe even back, a lot of people are kind of curious about it. But 
let's get into what the benefits are of organ meats because there are some, right? Yeah, I mean, the, there's, there's several benefits. I mean, they're high in protein, okay, which is a good thing. And if you're mm -hmm. looking for additional protein, that's an easy fix. Um, but they help with um, when you're eating, they get good iron absorption from them, uh, help control your appetite, uh, retain the muscle mass because of that. Uh, and, you know, it's easier and cheaper to, well, I don't know if it's easier, but it's cheaper to buy these types of meats um, than, you know, other other foods. And it, it can help with reducing food waste. So that's some of the other benefits to it. Uh, but they're also particularly high in B vitamins, uh, you know, B12, which is really important for, you know, your amino acid methylation, when you're recycling your amino acids, uh, and folate. That's another one that does that. Uh, they're also rich in minerals, mm. uh, including like magnesium, selenium, which is good for testosterone, zinc, which is good for testosterone, uh, which, you know, that's always a good thing. Important fat soluble vitamins, like you're going to get vitamins A, D, and E that, you know, a lot of people don't get because they don't eat that kind of food and vitamin K. And we know we need vitamin K to help put, uh, well, K2 anyways, to help push the, the calcium into the bones and not to their arteries. So that's another nice mm. feature there. And then, you know, Again, like I mentioned before, they're just an excellent source of protein that uh, can complement your your meal plan. Now, you know, obviously, you need to get with a, a chef that knows how to cook these, and that'll make it more palatable um, when you're considering this. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, a couple of things that you mentioned, I've had, I've had the beef tongue. It's very good, uh, depending mm -hmm. on how it's prepared. Yeah. And the same with tripe. Tripe's actually very good again, depending on how it's prepared. But, you know, I'm kind of curious, but I do have a guess. What is the, out of all the organ meats, which would be the healthiest? And I kind of have a guess, but uh, can you tell us maybe which one it is? Well, what do you think it is, Frank? <laughs> well, growing up and just by my age range, I'm 60 and going backwards, liver and onions, man. That was like uh -huh. one of the staples <laughs> at the dinner table. So I, I, I would say liver. I would have that as my guess. Yeah, I was raised with that too. And you just don't see or hear much about it anymore. No. Uh, even in the grocery stores, you don't you don't see much of it. But yeah, it's one of the you know, it's one of the healthier choices. Um, you know, and again, we've talked about beef liver before, so mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get into a, a repeat dissertation on it, but you Correct. know. Beef liver is high in protein. It's uh, it helps the liver, it helps detoxify the liver. So just a tremendous amount of benefits from that, and that's probably the one that most people can relate to because they probably had it in their lifetime. Outside of like the hearts, you know, I used to right. eat, eat chicken hearts. I kind of like those, <laughs> and then chicken livers. Uh, I like those too. I thought yeah, they were pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I had a friend of mine from England said liver makes me quiver. He he didn't like it so. <laughs> He wouldn't go near it at all. He's like, no, nah, I had to grow up eating that. I'm not eating it for the rest of my life. Uh, anyway. All right. So okay. for all the organ meats that are out there, if liver is the healthiest, right, that would be the best one. Yeah. Um, a mm, lot of people yeah. worry about their health, what they're eating. What about cholesterol? Is there any cholesterol issues depending on the organ meat you eat? Well, yeah. Um, basically, the research says that organ meats are high in cholesterol. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. Now, with that being said, what what I think it need, a lot of people need to understand when it comes to cholesterol, because I think even Vince knew about this too, but he just didn't like getting into it with people because it would just be repeating <laughs> the same thing over and over. Right. But, you know, cholesterol is produced by your liver, okay? So it's going to regulate your liver's, you know, body's personal cholesterol production. So if you're eating cholesterol and ingesting it, then the liver doesn't need to make more cholesterol. It just allows you to use the cholesterol you're eating. And you do need cholesterol for your hormones to help rebuild cells. You, know, you need those fats to keep your hormones working at a high level. And that's probably why we had our ancestors that lived so long is because they were eating these kind of foods uh, because of what it does. And I, mm -hmm. I think they kind of knew that. You know, for example, like when wolves, a pack of wolves kill an animal, they don't eat the flesh. The same thing with lions, too. And if you watch any, if you ever seen anything on mm -hmm. TV where they are attacking an animal, they go for the organs first right. and foremost. That's what they feed off of. That's until that's done. Then they slowly feed on the flesh. So 
Right. And, you know, that's just something to kind of keep in mind just from a national perspective, how, how, uh, you know, everything evolves. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. So unless you have some kind of a medical condition, you know, you're born with it or something regarding cholesterol, kind of keep in mind that yes, it has cholesterol, but and the second thing you're eating as well, your body can help regulate cholesterol. Now, I'm sure people are going to go, well, I, I got high cholesterol, so, I, you know, they're going to throw it under the bus potentially. Right. But they right. also need to understand that, that cholesterol is also caused by carbohydrates and other food sources as well. So it's not just one food source that's doing this. Right. So kind of keep that in mind, just making that quick comment. <laughs> well, the one thing that, that I think a lot of people, and I remember as a kid going back in time, was sometimes it was the taste of depending on maybe which one it was, but it was also mm -hmm. the texture. So what about the taste? How, how did you feel about that? Well, like for me, uh, it, it, it has a strong taste. I mean, when mm -hmm. you first eat your first bite of liver and, and, and the, it has a unique texture as well. Right. And I right. guess that depends on how it's cooked. You know, right. my mom, when she cooked it, I didn't, I didn't really like, like it that well. It was, it was actually kind of dry. It's what I mm -hmm. remember. She had the right. onions in there and the, the sauce and that kind of stuff, you know, right. like a lottery type of sauce, but um, it does have a strong and distinct flavor. So uh, you, you, it, you know, you, you would get used to it would be my, my opinion on it. But what they kind of suggest on that is if you're concerned about it, just combine some of it with the other meats you're cooking, you mm -hmm. know, maybe make it into a stew or, or something like that. So you can get it into the, to your dietary uh, palate, if you'd like. And do it that way versus just trying to you know eat something by itself and looking at it and you're getting all this wild imagination going about what it's going to do in your stomach. So um, that's some that's some input that like anything else, uh, want to take take that with a grain of salt too. <laughs> yeah, and and that is true, Armin, because uh, you know back in the day on you know, the Wild West or even before they would make wilderness stew and a lot of people would take different parts of whatever animal they yeah. had. And, you know, you have to think if you eat a wing or a thigh or a breast of a chicken, they're all kind of different, but they're the same. Oh, yeah. And depending on what type of sauce or what kind of flavor or seasoning you put in and you put them all together in a stew, you're really not going to know what you're eating and yeah. it probably tastes pretty darn good. So it just makes sense. So, right. I mean, so I'm yeah, kind of so, curious yeah. about your experience. I mean, ha have, have you had some experiences maybe you can share with us? Cause I know I have a couple too. Well, I don't, you know, the only experiences I have is just when I was a kid and mm -hmm. eating it and I didn't mind eating the hearts and the livers, you know, my mom usually got that from the, you know, from the chickens and then right. we'd have the tongue, then we'd have the liver and she tried to make that kind of once a week kind of thing. We always dreaded it. So, but we just bury it in the mashed potatoes and uh, just kind of hide it that way. <laughs> you take, you put the mashed potatoes, you load it up and then it's kind of wrapped it's all surrounded by the mashed potatoes and you, you kick it back and just chew and because we were in, you know probably like yourself in our day you had to clean your plate you need to clean mm -hmm. your plate well you got to sit there a while until you that's clean your right plate. <laughs> and we didn't have any dogs or any pets that we could you know throw under the table with so we had to kind of just rough it <laughs> a absolutely a lot of the experience i had was in the wilderness side of things my dad was a big hunter and We'd be mm -hmm. out and, you know, gosh, gosh, whatever we got, whether it was elk or deer or wild boar or whatever, a lot of that stuff we did repurpose and eat and save or freeze or whatever. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, depending on what it was, it had different textures, it had different flavors, but I always found that I enjoyed the, the wild animals the wilderness animals much more than the store-bought stuff that we bought. Um, it's just a different kind of flavor and different textures. And I enjoy the outdoor animals much more. Um, did you get to experience yeah, well, anything like from the wilderness? Yeah, you know, a little bit, but, yeah. um, you know, as a, as a kid, you're just, you're kind of, you're just focused on where it came from, what it is right. now. 
sometimes my mom would cook stuff and we didn't know and then it was no big deal but if we walked right. walked up to the skillet and it was being cooked you're like oh no man that's what we're gonna <laughs> have today so we are like oh man right, so right. you, you kind of dread it but you know your parents have your best intentions it's just that you know they just when you see it then you have this like when she had the tongue and you're laying out there on the counter and it was like oh my god <laughs> yeah yeah well, the other I mean, thing I could too, handle liver. That was you know, that's kind of a smooth looking textured piece of meat. That's right. like a typical piece of meat. But that tongue, man, the you know, before she had it sliced up, you're just like, ah, oh, geez. Right, it's just laying there. Yeah, this big tongue laying there. Yeah, yeah. Well, depending on how you cook it, or if if maybe this show has yeah. piqued your interest in wanting to try it, I'm sure there's tons of recipes online that you can find or try, or head out to a nice restaurant or somewhere and have somebody else prepare it maybe and give it a shot. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm not afraid to try anything. I've tried it all. Um, down here in Florida, we seem to have everything from, you know, from venison to gator or whatever. So, you know, you can yeah. try a lot of different things, but I would encourage you to be a bit daring and try it. I mean, uh, you know, if it's good for you, well, why not take a shot at it? Right. Yeah, there, there's de uh, there's definite benefits. I mean, our ancestors evolved eating all that. And so, you know, we just, the times that we grew up, things have changed. You know, everything's so much more commercialized. But back in the day, and, you know, I just think eating wild game is really good food. I and mean, every time I get that, I really enjoy yeah. eating it. I mean, it has a good taste to it. You, you know, it's leaner. I mean, because it's, you know, they eat the, the natural environment. Uh, so you don't have the additives and all the other things that would come with it with, you know, commercially raised uh, animals. So, mm -hmm. you know, it definitely has a lot of good benefits to it. The, the biggest thing is, is convenience, uh, how to cook it, things like that. But yeah, if you wanted to kind of change things up and, and, and increase your pile a little bit, then you can look at the uh, benefits of just trying different organ meats and put it into the, uh, into the flow. And I'm sure there are sites out there that already have it pre-prepared for you to just to cook so that you don't have to deal with the uh yeah, the, it could be, yeah. <laughs> the feel whatever uh so you know i i would encourage everybody to try it out because i think a, a lot of it too armin don't you think it's like the mental picture that you put up like when you say beef tongue that doesn't sound very appetizing but if you've had it and depending again on how it's prepared it's actually pretty darn good yeah, and I had I one time I had it, it was really good and you know I knew it knew it was having and everything. I was a little little you know, my mom just didn't make it real good, but right. <laughs> I've had it was made really well and I was like, yeah, right. it's it's really good. But yeah, you got the psychological factor, so keep that in mind. But just also keep in mind that, you know, if you're okay with trying it, there's a lot of good benefits to it. And it's you know, still probably gonna make you feel pretty good after you have it. So and your body you knows how to digest it. So Absolutely. Well, um Armin, a great show, a lot of great content, uh, really interesting stuff. I appreciate all the great information. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem. And uh, looking forward to doing it again next week. Awesome. Well, everybody, so... make sure that you check out nspnutrition.com. Uh, I got my hoodie on order. should be here tomorrow. So check out the hoodies, the supplements, a lot of great stuff on nspnutrition.com. So check it out. All right. And then, you know, we'd really like to get some, which we're, we have been getting is other questions and suggestions for different topics that you guys and gals have an interest in, you know, leave it in the comment section and then, you know, we'll consider that. And that's how the uh, organ meat thing came up was we had a mm -hmm. suggestion about it. So that's what we did. So we're pretty creative. Uh, but on top of that, you know, with those suggestions, please feel free to share it and get other people to subscribe. And the more people we get in here, the more we can start learning together and helping each other. And that's what it's all about is helping each other get better ideas to get more out of what you want to get from your, your training, your nutrition and everything all, all, all around. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Armin. And, you know, if you do have any comments or questions, please make sure that you leave them on the YouTube channel. There's a comment section right underneath and you can mm -hmm. leave them there. Or if you prefer to email, just put in the subject line NSP Nutrition Show or NSP Show, and you can email support at nspnutrition.com 
and they'll get the mm -hmm. question or the comment to us as well. And we'll make sure that we talk about it on a future show. Again, we appreciate your support. Arm and I couldn't do it without you. Thanks for joining us and check back next week for a new episode of the NSP Nutrition Show. Hey, thanks for checking out the NSP Show. Go to nspnutrition.com where you can find a whole heap of resources to help you achieve stunning definition and eye-popping levels of muscularity. Don't forget you can save 10% on your first order by using the code NSP Show at the checkout. Catch you next time.